Hey fish friends, Zenzo from Tazawa Tanks, back with another video. Um, I am uh, going to be talking today about filtration. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, what I've kind of an update on uh, my tanks and uh, also talking about um, what I call an instant cycle or um, just, you know, always ready to have a new tank started. Uh, first, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Corey at the Aquarium Co-op. I had the pleasure of uh, being up in uh, Seattle, Washington this week on business and um, stopped by his shop and he happened to be there and had an opportunity to chat with him a little bit and he actually gave me a little bit of advice on YouTube channels. So um, I'll put a link to his channel down below. But anyway, um, some of you may recognize the shape of this tank if you've seen my other videos. Um, the last time you saw this tank, it was a heavily planted South American tank. So this was a, um, previously it was a dirt substrate um, planted tank with uh, South American fish. So I had um, South South and Central or whatever, but I had the uh, apistos, I had um, angelfish, uh, cory cats, um, carnal tetras, rummy nose tetras, etc, etc. So um, anyway, I... Uh, had that up and running for quite a while and um, kind of got bored of the planet tank and you know I've, I've, I've um, always enjoyed keeping my Africans more than anything else so I decided to take that tank down I sold the fish um, I have some plants that I am going to be giving away um, to some people in the fish club and I converted this tank to an African tank so um, a little bit about this tank it's a 65 gallon tank um, it's a 65 tall, so really it's kind of like a 40 breeder that's taller. So kind of think about the footprint of a 40 breeder right around there, um, but then it's just a taller tank. So currently I have um, mostly juveniles um, in here, all from Lake Malawi. I have um, mostly Mbuna and Peacocks, and there are uh, a couple of Haps in there as well. Um, the plan with this tank is to grow these fish out, um, excluding the adults obviously that are already large enough, but to grow these out so that I can then convert this tank to an all Mbuna tank. So if you know my other tank, which I'll show you shortly, um, that tank is also Peacock's Haps and Mbuna. It's a larger tank, um, but the plan is to take all the Mbuna out of that tank and put them in this tank and take the grown um, peacocks and haps out of this tank and put them in the other tank. So that's going to be uh, down the road. Obviously these uh, fish need some time to get larger and uh, that's going to be pretty arduous of a project as I get, I'm going to have to take both tanks apart, catch all the fish and put them back in the tanks so that, um, you know, there isn't any uh, territorial issues. Well, of, of course there's going to be some, but it will reduce that obviously. So, um, but anyway, I'll talk a little bit about the cycle. And um, you know, the first thing that I that I did is uh, obviously clean the tank. And um, but when I took the other tank apart, and I've got a bunch of tanks in the basement fish room, so there's always uh, you know filtration going down there and and a space for fish. But um, the first thing I did is I wanted to take the filter media that I had and make sure that I continue to have that in an environment where the beneficial bacteria can continue to thrive. So I ensured that the filter media either went into the sump of the main Malawi tank or they went into other tanks in the fish room where there were fish in there so that they could continue to feed the bacteria. Um, the substrate is uh, crushed coral and mixed with aragonite. I've got uh, some lava rock in there, etc. Um, the way that I instantly cycled this tank though is when I was ready to put fish in here, I took the, obviously I dechlorinated the water with, I actually used Prime and Safe, I have both. Um, just a, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know why I did both because they're essentially the same thing, but um, dechlorinated the water and then added the um, I don't want to say it's live rock, but I took rock from the existing Malawi tank and put it in this tank. So some of the smaller rock pieces in the back were in the main Malawi tanks. So obviously they're covered with, 
you know, bacteria and algae and slime and all that kind of stuff, which is good for this tank. It kind of helps to seed it. And that really large piece on the right, um, that large, uh, actually a faux rock that the fish swim, and out, swim in and out of, that was also in the main tank. And um, obviously that was covered in bacteria as well. So that was um, helpful in kind of getting this tank seeded. But in addition, I have two um, sponge filters in here. And those sponge filters, one of those sponge filters was in the sump of the uh, other main Malawi tank. And then the other sub, the other um, sponge filter was in um, a 20 gallon tank that I have downstairs that had a bunch of fish in it as well. So that one was working. And then there's a pre-filter on the power head, which you can't see because it's dark right now in the dark background. But there's a uh, power head in there that has a sponge pre-filter. And that sponge pre-filter was also in the sump. And in addition, I have a hang on the back um, filter on this tank. And um, that hang on the back filter is filled with lava rock. And there's also some... Um, some ceramic pieces as well. But that lava rock was placed in a mesh bag and that was also put in my sump. So the lava rock that's in the hang on the back was in the sump, the sponge pre-filter for the power head was in the sump, one of the sponge filters was in the sump, and then the other sponge filter was in a tank with fish in it. So essentially all of the filtration that is being used for this tank um, has beneficial bacteria already seeded in, in the tank. So I was able to go ahead and add fish directly to this tank. Um, I've, you know, I've been checking the water parameters daily and except for, um, a couple days this week because I was traveling. So there was two days that I didn't check the water. Um, but when I checked it again today, it was fine. Um, I did see a little tiny bit of ammonia creep up. Um, I, it was between 0 and 0.25, so you know, it's really more of a trace, but I like to see 0 all the time. Um, no nitrites, and of course there's nitrates because that's being converted. Um, and the nitrates were right around, uh, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 parts per million, um, but I've been doing some pretty big water changes. So on this tank, as I mentioned, as far as filtration is concerned, I've got uh, two sponge filters. Those sponge filters are rated for 75 gallon tanks. Um, but of course you can't really go by that number because that's a very, um, that's very generalized, right? You don't know what the fish load is and you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I have two of those sponges in here. Um, I do have a hang on the back that is um, purely for, um, purely for uh, biological filtration. So the, um, the lava rock and, and the ceramic pieces um, are just, you know, housing the bacteria and so that's consuming the nitrates and then I also stuck some um, pothos plants in that hang on the back as well so some more um, nitrate sucking um, capabilities in that and then in addition to the hang on the back and the two sponge filters I do have the sponge pre-filter on the power head and lastly which I haven't talked about yet is I have a canister filter on this tank so I have a, um, it's a Magnum 350. I actually got it from a customer um, who decided to go away from her canister filter on her tank and go to um, dual um, giant hang on the backs on her 120. So she didn't want it, it wasn't working for her. I had to repair it a little bit, do some fixing, um, buy some new parts for it, but I got it working. And so the canister filter is um, doing a lot of the mechanical filtration, um, as well as some biolo biological and chemical filtration. So that's, so currently I have carbon in there. Um, I'll probably put some purigen in there in the future. And I do have some lava rock in that canister filter as well, along with obviously the uh, filter padding that's doing the mechanical filtration. So a lot of filtration on this tank. Um, this tank is you know, the plan is I'm going to have, uh, you know, 21, 22-ish Mbuna in this tank. So if you take the normal rule for overstocked tanks that have lots of filtration for African cichlids, basically you take the volume of the tank, you divide that by, um, divide, divide that in half, and that's basically about the number of Mbuna that you could have in a tank. So because it's um, not a long tank and it's a little bit taller, it's 36 rather than 48 inches. I'm going to treat it um, a little bit, um, treat it as a smaller tank and not take into account the 65 gallons, but think of it more of like uh, 
well, like a giant 40 breeder, so kind of more along the lines of 45, 50 gallons, even though it is a 65 gallon tank. So, so the plan is, is I'm gonna have about, you know, 20 to 22, 23 in Boone in here, and, um, and then I will take the peacocks and haps and put them in the other tank. So anyway, I hope you like this tank. I'm gonna uh, take you to the other tank now. Okay, so here we are back at the, uh, the original Malawi tank that I have with uh, Peacock, Saps, and Abuna. So as you can see here, these fish are much larger. You can see that OB hap that I have over there on the left um, is uh, quite large. He's probably a good six inches easily. Um, you can see the Peacock there in the foreground is also a good five or six inches. There is an ACI in this tank that you don't see because he's hiding in his cave behind the 3D background. Um, but that ACI is one of the largest um, Mbuna that I've seen in private aquariums. I've seen some giant ones at public aquariums. Um, but he's probably as big as my hand, maybe a good, you know, it's very large. So um, anyway, so uh, obviously those fish in the other tank need to grow out so that they can go in here. And then um, some of the larger Mbuna in this tank would be going in the other tank. So I've got red zebras, I've got, uh, I don't know, maybe seven or so um, yellow labs in this tank. I've got three ACI, two erratus, so they'll all be going in the other tank. But um, anyway, so that's uh, this tank. You've seen this before. I just wanted to show you quickly the sump. Um, so underneath I have a, you can see there, that is a 20 gallon tank um, that I've uh, made a sump out of. Uh, on the right side, you can't really see it, but it's a wet dry, so the water comes through the overflow down through hose into the wet dry that trickles down, goes up and over. That middle section is a refugium. Um, I used to have a bunch of moss and stuff like that in there, and it wasn't working for me. Um, and I, it was just just wasn't working. But the um, pothos plant, which you can see, that just grows crazily. I mean, it's it's one of the fastest growing plants. Um, that I've experienced and um, it's a great nitrate eating machine. So um, I have that down there and um, I'm not sure if you can see but um, right in front, right where that heater is, or not the heater but the thermometer, there's another sponge filter. So I always like to have filtration ready and that sponge filter is um, ready to go in the event that um, I need to set up another tank real quickly. As I mentioned, I've got a bunch of tanks in the basement um, for various uh, purposes of, um, you know, hospital tank, quarantine tank, or grow out tanks, or, you know, breeding when I was doing that a little bit. So anyway, um, that is the main tank. And since I'm here, excuse the bumpiness, I'm gonna show you the Tanganyikan tank. So if you've, if you've seen the other videos, you know that this is my most recent, well, until I did the Malawi tank, uh, the, the smaller one. This is um, my 60 gallon tank and you can tank with uh, multifasciatus that are breeding like crazy. And I recently got some Cyprochromus um, leptosoma, um, which you probably, I hope, saw the unboxing video and a little bit of uh, a little bit about that. So um, I'll just uh, show you the zoom in on the fry, I have a fry explosion. Um, I have no idea how many fry, I estimated at one time 50, but I think I was wrong. Um, probably more than that, they're all over the place. Um, they're a little shy right now because I'm standing right in front of the tank with the camera. But um, I'm excited to see those grow out. There's some bigger ones down there, some juveniles from a previous batch. So anyway, that's my little, uh, my little slice of um, East Africa. So I've got Lake Tanganyika, I've got Malawi, I've got Malawi over there. So um, I'm excited to uh, continue to um, experience the growth of these fish and as well as the ones in the new tank. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Um, I welcome your feedback. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, if, you, if you comment on my um, comment section and ask me to follow your channel, I will do my best to reply and follow you as well. Thanks very much. Take care.